Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus. Welcome to this week's Midweek Word. Throughout Lent, we're exploring the barriers we experience to our well-being so that we can actually figure out how we become well. This week's barrier of focus is self-doubt. Pastor Alice did a beautiful job on Sunday exploring how Moses displayed self-doubt when God called Moses to lead the Hebrew people through the Exodus out of Egypt into the Promised Land. And in that, there were great examples of how many different ways Moses experienced self-doubt. Some about some of it was about his capabilities. Some of it may have been a belief that he needed to be perfect. But ultimately, it was a belief that he was not qualified, that he was not good enough that he could not do. And for many of us, I would venture to say all of us at some point in time in our life will experience self-doubt. So how do we actually become well? As our order of worship noted this past week, we become well when we trust our capabilities and allow imperfections. But how do we actually trust our capabilities? Do we just say, I've got this, I'm good. I wish, I wish it was that easy. But really, if the muscle memory, whether in mind, heart, body, or spirit, is stronger towards self-doubt than in trusting our capabilities, we have to begin creating a bridge from self-doubt to trust. So for that to kind of get explored and practiced, I'm going to invite you through a couple reflection questions to begin seeing how you can build that bridge for yourself. The first question is this. What do you know you do well? What do you know you do well? The next is, how are you able to trust that you do that well? How are you able to trust that you do that well? Where in your life do you experience self-doubt? Where in your life do you experience self-doubt? Where did you first experience that self-doubt? Where did you first experience that self-doubt? When looking at this area of self-doubt in your life, where do you see truth and where do you see falsehood in that experience? When thinking of this area of self-doubt, where is there truth and where is there falsehood 
in that experience. Now thinking back on the area in your life that you trust you can do well. How might that experience of trust in your capabilities become a bridge for the area in your life where you experience self-doubt? When thinking about that area in your life that you trust you can do well, how might that experience become a bridge for the areas of self-doubt? that you experience. For the areas that might be true when it comes to your self-doubt, how can you allow imperfection or grace to become the bridge to acceptance versus self-doubt? When thinking of the areas that might be true about your self-doubt, how could you allow imperfections or grace to be the bridge to acceptance versus self-doubt. You may have responded to those questions and thought to yourself, how is this helpful at all? And that's fair because Oftentimes we don't explore our self-doubt. We don't explore how we can work through it. We sometimes just let it tell us how to function or behave in relationship to it. The reason I asked the first question about what is an area you can trust you do well. Sometimes we need to be able to explore what we do well to begin to see that we actually have some of those same traits in areas of our self-doubt but we've never explored it, so we can't really see the connection points. The reason I asked the questions around your self-doubt is to begin to kind of hold your self-doubt up and look at it from different angles. If we begin to examine, even if there's some truth to the reasons we have self-doubt, we can begin to allow imperfections or grace to shift us from self-doubt to acceptance. For example, there are things that I used to think I did well and then started having self-doubt creep in. For example, while I'm good at community organizing, I am not good at turnouts for actions. You don't really need to know what that is, except it took a while to shift from self-doubt about my abilities collectively around community, uh, community organizing to an acceptance that I am not good at producing turnouts for actions within community organizing. And so I shifted from self-doubt about my entire abilities to be a community organizer to acceptance around something I am not good at. Acceptance is an aspect of freedom. Self-doubt is something that speaks about who we are and our capabilities. And that's a big shift. For example, I can still do turnouts for actions, but I need to allow grace and imperfections at the fact that I may not reach my number because I'm, not, I'm still growing in those skills. And maybe there are other people who can do it better or differently than me and have a different outcome that serves the action collectively better. Self-doubt can be something that speaks to us, about us. And when we begin to explore our self-doubt, we become the one guiding the conversation. We begin to see where there's falsehoods. So the reason I asked about the falsehoods is 
sometimes we realize, oh, that's not my voice at all. Pastor Alice noted this in her sermon on Sunday that sometimes the voices come from other people, come from the systems and um, structures we were raised in or with. And so if we can see that, whoa, I actually don't believe that about me at all. I believe I am capable of this or that. We allow ourselves to trust our capabilities. And like with my example, allow imperfections. I didn't always reach my quota in turnouts for actions, but I was able to see that I was still a good community organizer. Maybe just not at all the aspects of community organizing. So the falsehood was that I'm not a good community organizer. The allowing imperfections is I need to grow in how I invite people to actions and create turnout for people to show up to the action. It's a long journey from self-doubt to trusting capabilities and allowing imperfection. But hopefully today, you began to kind of hold up your self-doubt and look at it in different lenses and different lights to see what might be true and where acceptance can come in there versus self-doubt and how to trust your capabilities so that you can actually move forward in trusting who you are, what skills and passions and talents you have. And allowing yourself to be you versus who you might be comparing yourself to, whether that comparison is an actual to an actual person or an expectation that somebody else held for you. The barrier of self-doubt can keep us from moving forward, period. And it may take a while to take even the first step to explore our self-doubt. But I trust that as we do, we get to see how that barrier impacts our well-being. And in that exploration, that exploration alone will move us further to a place of well-being. So thank you for taking a chance today to explore your self-doubt, to begin creating a bridge from self-doubt to trust and allowance. I pray that you are able to continue this journey of exploring barriers that are not easy, allowing healing in areas where self-doubt might exist so that you can continue to be well. You are God's beloved. God sees your goodness, your skill, your talent, your flaws, your imperfections, and says, come to me. Let us do this gospel work together, just as we saw God do with Moses. God loves you. God delights in you. And God prays also for your well-being. So go into this week exploring, risking, and maybe trusting yourself a bit more. If you're joining us for our Lenten conversation this evening, we'll see you in just a moment on Zoom. By way of reminder, next week there will be no midweek word as we take a moment of rest before Holy Week, beginning on the 24th. The week of Holy Week, you will have chances to engage with digital offerings like we do with midweek word on Monday and Tuesday. And then there will be a service every day leading up to Easter. Wednesday and Saturday will take place at noon. Thursdays and Fridays will take place at seven. We look forward to you engaging with us during Holy Week as it begins on Palm Sunday. And we hope that you rest well next week. Take good care. Sancte Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus, veni Sancte Spiritus, come Holy Spirit. 
from the heaven shine forth with your glorious light when he sung the spirit of